to start a mental health institution and what are the guidelines you need to follow, things like that. Okay. So if you have any basic uh, questions you have about this topic, you can raise me now so that actually I can uh, I can probably talk around that. Or else I can talk the general things and then you can ask me questions also, whichever is comfortable for you. Sir, we will have the question and answers after your talk, sir. Yeah, I mean. okay. Thank you for uh, choosing this topic because this is very uh, Many people don't want to come to the psychiatrist right is because it's very vague topic and it is very a uh, lot of uh, now in fact this new mental health care act now it has come 2017 which is also a lot of guidelines which is not actually allowing or has got a lot of conditions to yes you want to ask something sir no no sir you continue sir oh is this tracing is the hand so i was wondering no, no, sir. Awesome. We'll have yeah. question and answers after your uh, session. Uh, so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, actually, basically, when you want to start an uh, institution mental health care center, basic thing is you need to either you want to have a business model or in a charity model. Okay. It's a business model. You have to register with a registered office in a business mode as a partnership model. Okay, where you have one or two partners along with you and then start and have a partnership, this thing, and you have to uh, uh, file a GST also. Now, this is a new, recent, uh, this thing which you have to file a GST, a number you have to get it, and you have to start. And whether you have a partner model or trust model or society model, one more thing is you can go, it's like, like uh, forming a society under Societies Act, uh, stacked also. Whichever is comfortable for you, it has got its own merits and demerits. For example, if you have a partnership model, and probably that in that actually there, there is some rules and regulations for a partnership and uh, who has to be the partner, who has to be managing partner, and who has to contribute, how long uh, the fund flow and all these things. Okay, That is the uh, basic logistics, how you have to run the center. I have started. I, you, you were mentioning about actually other wood trust. Really, it was only an other wood institution where we had a partnership model, but other partners were not having that much. They were probably, probably expecting a lot of money out of this this thing, so they wanted to come out of that. So then I converted that as a trust. Now it is only a trust. Okay. So whether you have trust model, trust or uh, society act, we had registering it. You should be very careful about three things actually basically one is whom and all you are inviting to be the part of it you no know? it's a partner means you have to have, see that actually how your partnership works you know basically basically based on the amount you will be having whether is a, a, a just a partner or working partner things like that okay whether it's a trust and society is a different model by itself because that comes under under as uh, charity uh, charity also involved in that where you can also do a lot of charity activities, you can raise funds, and then also you can show the accounts, uh, and you have to file the income tax as like union partnership model also. But here that is a little bit, uh, uh, some somewhere you have got some leniencies there, somewhere you can find actually there are some restrictions also there. In fact, now uh, there's, I, there's, I think I'm sure some of you also got, would have gone through that. Uh, any trust, uh, uh, any society which is already registered also, recently registered also, they have to re-register that now. That's as per the new regulations, the government of India has been launched. So we should be actually uh, update ourselves about these acts, as well as uh, when you're forming that trust, you know, uh, trust may be a few of you joined together. Okay, it may be a family trust also. One uh, more than one person actually can be there. In that two uh, two persons can be there in the trust, and you can uh, run the trust. And once the trust is registered, you need not actually renew the trust. No, the renewal is automatically happens when you are filing that income tax. Whereas the societies, there is group of members. Uh, seven to eight members, sometimes fifteen members also will be there. In that group, uh, in societies act. When you register and you have to see this, like many people are there in the form. No, otherwise, what will happen is like they will ask a lot of questions in between. They, they should ask, but same time, actually, you should see the, actually, the growth of the organization. That is a very important one. 
unless otherwise you know when when you start when you starting this as a totally earlier the business model is different this is a charity model and you are trying to do something for the society at the same time you cannot be the loser of also also there will be you have to work out like that and properly plan like that and then do something you know for example uh, you are investing you you are actually uh, you are um, uh, investing on uh, one institution a certain institution there will be a lot of things that you, you have to invest in the beginning for example you find a office you have to put some advance for the office and then renting the office and then uh, forming all these guidelines uh, and also uh, conveying in the meetings with the, uh, with the people and all these things should have just happen and these people who are the members of the societies act and you should actually make sure that people are regularly attending it and uh, contributing for the welfare of it they cannot just sit on one place and say that many people nowadays uh, they want to do only their name they have to want i am the member of this uh, trust the, that trust and all this thing no they only want like lines member or this member like that and they uh, you know when you really want to see the growth of the institution uh, those things may not be actually uh, in a sustainable mode especially in the beginning stage you have to see that where the person has got a like minded person and willing to contribute uh, not only just money alone and other things also when you do see take some decisions that person must be in a position to uh, help you to and also support you to find some sources and contacts for you to raise funds for the institution okay so the your the form uh, and there is uh, all these three things you have to only register in the registered office whether it is a partnership model or societies act or uh, interest act all three things you have to register with the registered office and you have to there is some stamp the amount is there very minimal amount you have to go there to the with the bylaws all the forms are available in the all the say this thing and you have to form uh, file with there and they will give the id card and number and everything to the same day itself sometimes they will take some for the trust it will take 3 to 7 days they will take the give the numbers okay once the trust is a trust or society is formed and you are also decided to do mental health no so i am going to just tell you about very specifically about when you want to start in mental health mental health institution what you need to follow first of all you need to have mental health professionals but yeah, but some of the institution you can see nowadays even the non medical non mental health professional also starting that only need to have is basic thing is willingness to serve people that's all okay when you have you yourself is also mental health professionals will and good that's an added advantage okay but there is no mandate that you must be a mental health professional to start a psychiatric institution not 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 at all okay you are uh, you are only leading the institution or you are only uh, taking lot of initiation for the institution and for which you can, you have to only do the <clears throat> basic formalities as i told you that trust as i said right and then same thing and then whatever the income you get or you are contributing something for the institution for example if you want to buy a land for to get develop one construct one building there or you take on building and you are hiring it uh, for a rent and you are paying something as advance all these things accounts and income uh, and uh, all these things accounts has to be filed and income tax uh, this filing has to be done along with your uh, number uh, given in the if you have an atg you no know, first they will give totally after some time you no know, uh, by show, by showing your uh, need your uh, work uh, activities uh, they used to they were giving actually after 3 years 4 years earlier nowadays even within 6 months your trust is functioning well and you have a sufficient uh, actually data with you you can go and sit to the commissioner the commissioner of income tax and you can say that actually you are doing this and you want atg at the earliest possible in fact i know some of my friends also got within 8 months of time atg also you can get it okay and 35 1 and 2 is mostly we have a research and other things you will get it where you will whenever you get any funds for that and you will getting almost 100% exemption from that a person who is paying for that okay so they are, because that was most of the people also are expecting now you to actually uh, ask because uh, when a money is given most of the people say uh, how do i get benefit out of that no they what they really can't get the benefit they need to have a totally or atg or 35 1 and 2 or sometimes even more than that also it's come now okay so you have to see that uh, whether the trust act uh, societies act you have to file income tax and all these things one and second very very important thing is important thing is as per the mental health act 
that the you have to there is a form available in the website of all the respective states i now know that there are many of you attending out of tamil nadu also so uh, there is a respective states has got the rules and regulations and you have that the portal in the uh, the uh, uh, health department website of the uh, 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 portal of the respective uh, states has got a form you have to download the form fill the form and tell them the requirements what is there for example if you have a uh, 20 bed psychiatric home you want to start and basic minimal thing is actually the psychiatrist must visit at least weekly once okay and uh, psychiatric social worker must be there if it is up to 50 patients one psychiatric social worker is necessary and up to 50 patients one psychologist bottom psychologist is mandatory okay and occupation therapist or supervisor is mandatory up to 50 patients like that there is a slabs are available the respective states also has got a state mental health rules you know in tamil nadu also has got actually tamil nadu state mental health rules okay as you also read there about me actually i am also part of this state mental health authority government of tamil nadu where we are actually developing the rules based on the act mental health care act for example earlier it was mental health act now it is mental health care act based on this act now we are now developing a uh, it is based on actually the what is the availability for example uh, couple of months back we had a discussion before corona issue about the Uh, charges for this running these centers when you have a center of around actually 50 patients how much do you uh, the institution can uh, the government can charge you no the for licensing actually the three three years validity license actually earlier it was only uh, 10000 rupees now the recent uh, the uh, last year october when they have actually they have raised to 1 lakh rupees which is a very huge amount no if it is more than 51 to uh, from 50, that's the one who was strongly opposed that is why we need to have some willing uh, people to come and uh, uh, people to actually uh, start these institutions so now it is actually the uh, last year we, last month we had a discussion the still uh, Uh, health secretary of gomda tamil nadu also was the chairman of that and we had a like a video conferencing only we had this meeting and we have finalized it to uh, 5000 and uh, sorry 10000 and 20000 up to 50 patients it is 10000 rupees licensing charges and uh, 51 to 100 patients it is uh, 20000 rupees okay plus 1000 rupees for the registration there is some number they will give for which they have to pay 1000 rupees for that the institution uh, when you uh, when you apply that within 3 to 6 months of time they have to deport a mental health professional from the respective mental hospital or uh, sometimes for example if a person from coimbatore if they ask the mental hospital person cannot send the person from here so they will deport a person from the uh, same district itself no the district person will come and inspect the uh, inspect the place and say whether the the place is suitable to run psychiatric setup or not no again there are three things are there you since you asked the question about psychiatric home or rehabilitation center i am telling about all these things whether it is a psychiatric hospital there is little bit little bit more stringent rules are there okay let me first complete the uh, what is what the home requires first so you need to say that as for example uh, as per the act it tells so we need to have one bathroom for 6 to 8 patients in patients are there means for example you have a 50 uh, bed this thing around actually 12 bathrooms you need to have, sorry uh, 8 to 7 by 8 to 10, 10 bathrooms you need to have that bathrooms and toilets you know and they need to have a re bathroom this thing should be there and ventilation has to be there proper ventilation has to be there and each bed you know between the two beds has been minimum 1 meter distance has to be there. a gap has to be there and uh, uh, 3 to 4 people one fan must be there like that you know there is a uh, rules and regulations and what the size of the room and what the ventilation how the ventilation has to be there if you have a special people like mental retardation that are still like rules is very difficult and if you have a mental retardation with uh, the other things also there because we cannot actually say that as mental health institution we cannot admit these people 
no there is special uh, this thing also is uh, provisions available for mentally retarded homes hello hello i think they can mute and then talk okay fine mm. thank you so uh, they have actually wanted to have a mentally uh, retarded homes there are little bit different rules are there for that you know there is a again same uh, same uh, licensing only available for them also but when the provisions for some of the rehabilitation therapies for example i told you psychiatrist must be there psychiatrist must be there must be there psychologist must be there and occupational therapist must be there like for mentally mentally health rehabilitation center but for mentally retarded there will be special educators will be there no added at one this thing is uh, special educator has to be there if they have inpatient care again the rooms must be accessible you know of course it is the same word we are using but unfortunately many institution do not have this uh, this is not been implemented at all okay whether it is education institutions or even we have the centers you can see the accessibility you know when the person with some uh, difficulty uh, they have in their disability for example physical disability and many institution do not have this accessibility at all so but whereas this new mental health care talks very uh, lengthy about it and you should have a, a proper ventilation and accessibility to the reaching to the whether it's a recreation center or a dining center or to the uh, inpatient ward also okay so i think can i stop here or are you listening to me or not yes sir we are listening uh, sir uh, is it possible for you to switch on your video if it's possible then yeah i can yes sir please yes. I, my this thing was slow there is one thing i don't know whether uh, can able to switch on that's why i was skipping it we cannot connect your webcam it is webcam is Okay, sir. Uh, somewhere it is there. Somewhere it is there. I don't know where the what is the reason for that. It is something else. Sorry. Hmm? Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah, fine. Hello. Yes, sir. You can continue, sir. Continue. Yeah, fine. So I'm trying my video. If it gets a clip, fine. Otherwise, I think I have to find. But kindly excuse me. But anyway, so um, when we uh, want to start this psychiatric rehabilitation center, and psychiatric rehabilitation center also need to have some kind of a therapy, a vocation therapist, and vocation therapist also need to show actually why the person, particular person is there, and if the person has got actually voluntary admission and involuntary admission also is there. The new mental health care, a lot of things are there, and in fact, it, it also forgets to talk about something like wandering mental illness and other things, which I will tell talk to you later. And the mental health act, what it tells is new mental health care, like the, they need to get admission when the person wants to get admission. If it's involuntary, that means someone is brought uh, without the consent of the patient and it has to be actually uh, taken to the court of law and all these things. And people, uh, if you admit with the consent from the family members, you can still admit. But the person, has, the, 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 the psychiatry team must assess the patient. Uh, periodically and check whether the person has got capacity to take a decision. Once that capacity is taken decision, and if the person says that as like I don't want to be there, you have to immediately discharge the patient. And there are boards has been developed after this as you know the new mental health care. Each district has got a, a district review boards. So when you are running a mental uh, psychiatric rehabilitation center, you must actually talk to the uh, district uh, review boards and tell them about your admissions, discharges, and all. Okay? You cannot actually admit a patient without the consent of the patient. Okay? So when you have consent and not have a, the patient is not consented also, both things you should actually inform to the uh, mental, uh, sorry, the review, district review boards. The district review boards has got a psychiatrist will be there and an advocate will be there and social worker and psychologist and all this. Now, whatever the state level is, authority is there same number same 
think this actually will be people also will join the district review boards sometimes the districts are small districts two or three districts together they will be having the district review boards so you the, the mental health institution must have a contact with these people and do send the, uh, the do send the admission and discharge or death or escape details to them it is a mandatory because uh, in the new act it tells actually the rights of the person has to be safeguarded so without that actually they can they you, can, you, you cannot do any inhuman activities or if in fact they tell us it is if you do admit itself is inhuman okay so we should actually abide that and the rules of this uh, state mental health authority and district review boards also we should inform them okay so then there is one more thing also uh, is there which is actually again as i told you in the beginning that actually uh, when you have this hospital model psychiatry hospital there are little bit uh, this thing is there because there uh, there you have to have this at least one medical officer you know? this new mental care act again tells actually there is not required to have a psychiatrist for that you no know? there even actually uh, ayurveda siddha person also can be there to treat that you no know? that is a lot of contradictory is there at the, uh, the national level actually in, in india uh, there are people who are against siddha ayurveda you know and all these things but okay what has it been done the act is, is telling like that so i don't think actually you can uh, deviate from that so where you can make the deviation is at the state level only okay again you cannot to deviate probably see that the what prevalence of professionals there you do not have professionals there and i mean uh, there also professionally but if you do not have a um, psychiatrist there you can probably use that ayurveda siddha person also to treat these patients but it is again depends upon the state mental health rules of the particular state okay they can frame like that and then they will tell like that this is the hospital model what happens is like actually they, they need to have a full time psychiatrist if there is more than 20 patients and that is especially when you have the acutely ill patients you are admitting lot of rules and regulations are there you cannot restrain or you cannot actually tie the patients and without their consent if you are doing that again you are you will be punished penalized also once again sorry can you excuse me for the i just got the call so uh, when you really want to have, when you want to start this actually the hospital model uh, you have to get the license from the licensing authority there are too many licenses are available for example even if you start in a rehab center you need to have that license for the building building license uh, sanitary license and also uh, these are the five or six things also that uh, fire and fire service people you have to get license okay these are all the of course you can take a little bit uh, lesser time to within a one year you have to produce all these things but if you rent a building again there is minimal thing only is there is a own building of course there will last lot of things but it's a rented building clean is again you cannot deviate from the whole thing as like little bit deviation can be accepted that depends upon the licensing authority who will be visiting for the inspection for license for the hospital setup when you see the hospital that means there will be acutely ill patients you are taking when your acutely ill patients are taking how are you treating chemical restraint or physical restraint so okay and uh, there are regulations for the physical chemical restraint there is some um, regulations for the physical restraints also you cannot restrain them physically okay um, if it, if it, you are uh, restraining them physically and there should there is a model and if you are really actually uh, doing the uh, you are following that model then you can definitely do it otherwise it is difficult okay questions for me yes sir uh, we have lot of questions uh, for you uh, i'll go through them one by one uh, uh there are questions like uh, sir is uh, uh, participants whoever have questions can unmute yourself and go ahead with the question so that uh, the resource person can answer your queries already okay, already already i got something in the chat box can i answer for that now sure sir sure sir 
So trust and NGO, see whether it's a trust, you are registered under trust or in a society act, it is called an, an NGO, non-governmental organization. NGO means a non-governmental organization. Okay. So any organization which without having any profit basis in the voluntary basis, if they're running it, is called as non-governmental organization. Okay. It's a government body. Okay. And it is also having doing some voluntary activities that is called NGO. Okay. So trust is the method you are actually registering it. How are you registering with the government? Either trust or societies act. There are two acts. Trust acts and the societies act. Okay, that is a different, but there is no difference between NGO and a trust. Okay, then. So how to register an institution? Basically, as I told you, if you go to any registered office, your locality, registered office or locality with your ID proof and address proof. And there is a rules and regulations guidelines available in the Trust Act and in the, this thing. If you want, I can share you with you with the mail ID to Veena, someone over the organizer here. Okay, and you can go through that. And there is a form, there is actually the uh, format available. You can with the, you just type that formula, the format in the bond sheet of the, you know, the amount which is mentioned in the uh, registered office. You can register that. But before that, kindly, as I told you, you read both and uh, see that like-minded people and then register this. So while you're registering it, you have to give all the uh, details of the each member. For example, what the person is doing, what is the, the area of interest, how many member, number of years you worked, and address proof, ID proof, contact number, three things like that they will ask. You have to, and also their signature. And you need not take all the seven members or eight. Or 15 members you have there in the institution you know and uh, two members maybe probably the person whom you're selecting as the managing trustee or uh, and one more person there as uh, this thing so okay same thing for the societies also secret and one more person can be there or two or three people need, need be there other need not be there in physical you know otherwise they, they on the form itself after typing the for format you can type it and then take the signatures of the respective place just be mentioned and then submit to the registrar. The registrar will ask you and take the photo and the register and then also give you the register number. Of, you can use the register number which is then uh, published in the government, uh, this thing, register office. Yeah, psychiatrists need not be there in the What happens is like, in a rehab center, is a, there are two things are there. Either you have a daycare center or if you have the uh, inpatient care. If it is inpatient care, the medicines has to be monitored, altered, and regulated by psychiatrist only. Hence, it is mandatory at least weekly once or 10 days once the psychiatrist must visit the institution. For example, yeah, if you are running a center with a long time, long time illness and do not have any issues, even then, it is a mandatory at least monthly once you have to show some records of the person has visited. Otherwise, what happens is like uh, many institutions you can see, I can tell you about in Chennai, around actually 130 to 150 institutions do not have a registration with the mental hospital. They are running centers. Yeah, they are centers they are running. There are some of them are running as psychiatry centers also. So whether it's a rehab center, definitely they need to have a psychiatrist. That is what is the mandate as per the Mental Health Care Act. Yeah, main license is nothing like main license for actually psychiatric rehab center. But is a rehab center or universal center only one license is there. It is entry. In fact, is it that license is valid for both. In fact, I have three licenses now. That license valid or actually it is uh, in the license itself they would have written as. Uh, both psychiatry rehabilitation center slash they can also have alcoholic uh, center also. And you have DH center also, you can use it. So DH, both DH center and for also the rehabilitation center, the, uh, so both the same license only. Okay. So after that, if you want to have anything else along with that, probably you need to have, as I told you, if you have an acute care ward, or you, if you, have, you want to, to have part of that as a, acutely ill ward then you need to have a special uh, rules for that and you know the dimensions of the room and uh, uh, what are the things you're keeping what are the mental health professions and things like that you should have that i will make definitely i'll share the visiting doctors and the supportive professionals yes visiting doctors and i never said this is a full-time uh, this thing so
you can have the full time uh, you can have a psychiatrist like, intravenously you can in fact a lot of deviations sorry a uh, uh, little bit of uh, uh, this thing because many times the rural and especially in northern parts of uh, uh, in india we do not have a psychiatrist even for the whole state five or six psychiatrists are there it, it does so it, it doesn't mean that is the need is very very less you need to have but that's only in the new mental characters are even doctor can take care of the uh, take care of the rehab center okay and supportive profession they can visit but again supportive professions whom do you mean i don't know but i i, I understand that actually you are only meaning at least psychologist or psychiatrist workers but psychiatrist workers need not be there for full time but if it is more than 30 40 patients you need often need to have there full time that not only full time the full like i am day to day uh, 24 by 7 they have to be there which means they can take off like that okay Nurses is also like that if the person is more than actually you have uh, aged people around with uh, for example uh, of out of 50 patients you have around 20 to 30 people are aged people more than uh, 55 60 years old and you definitely expected uh, a nurse to be there because most of the time you can see that comorbidity among the patients such cases uh, it is mandated that actually uh, the visiting consultant of medical general medical uh, i mean uh, basic uh general medicine or basic mbbs is enough for that yeah so day care center not required but again when you have some kind of this thing at you need to have one registration with the state welfare board states uh, you need to have that welfare board for special children because special children again there are people who are bringing in the mail Uh, auto rickshaws that too as like i have been seeing them even today morning i have see them as like seven or eight people in in one rickshaw auto rickshaw and going like that i do understand there is uh, there is no uh, ambulance service for these people to uh, transport at the same time there are regulations is there to regulate to uh, protect the uh, uh, protect the rights of the individuals especially with the special needs children as well as adults Uh, the government has given uh, mandatory registration for the two okay daycare center for general children and other things the some mild regulations are there for special children there is regulations and you must uh, register with the authority of the respective district there there is now it is a decentralized to the districts but again it is not happening into the across the uh, country you can It is like as I told you, there are many uh, northern states who do not have these professionals. Uh, if at all they are available, they might be sitting at the state headquarters. So such what happens is like they will only direct all the forms there. So and you should also register only there. If it is a decentralized and the many uh, professionals and the professionals are there for the looking after the respective areas, you can register with the district. health authority district uh, differently able department district disability department why is it two words is tamil nadu we are using district differently able department and other respects of the country we are using disability department okay one more department is that social welfare department so social welfare department if you are uh, some of the for example andhra you need to register with the social welfare department if you go to karnataka and uh, if you go to actually kerala you should register with actually uh, state different able department sorry disability department centers also required to get registered with societies or trust actually uh, any center anything actually you are take even you have a creech you are running okay creech but to take care of the kids actually five or six kids it is a mandatory that you must register but many times due to our political influences people are deviating diverting from that it is mandated that you must register especially elderly care centers you know elderly care are very very special care like you said child uh, child special yes elderly people also special because they may they either they will be having physical health issues comorbidity and they sometimes the people have a dementia lot of issues they have actually so it is a mandated that the the institution which is running the such elderly care centers must have a registration and uh, they must also have sufficient men, uh, professionals to look after that because it is not as stringent rules as mental health care act you know elderly care centers uh, 
uh, if this only you taking care of this general doctor is coming monthly once and checking up their uh, BP, sugar and parameters and you have one nurse. So suppose if you have up to 100 patients you are having and one or two nurses in a month, they were, they wrote, uh, that is enough for that, you know. And medical uh, doctor testing monthly once and you have accessibility and you have sufficient bathrooms are there. That is enough for the, uh, to get the license for that. See, this is elderly care centers are also required to get to register. Okay, see, anything you want, either it's up to you whether you want to register in a trust act or society's act. Okay, but it's a mandate that you must register uh, this thing. And if you're again, you wanted to have a profit based one, you should have that, uh, uh, you should have, uh, you should register there. Okay, otherwise, you should have, uh, you should partnership for this thing, otherwise, you should register only in the trust act. And this is a very good question and others, what should we do? Yes. So that's what actually the, the okay, of course, in fact, I was also got trained by WH. Uh, we should not do the restrain and chemical restrain or physical restrain. And this, this question was asked like, actually when he is summing to himself others, uh, don't you think it is, it should be actually controlled? Yes. You just see the rest of the clinical control. You have also see the rest of what is uh, provoking things which is happening, why the person is, uh, arming others and if it's not seems to be actually then it is better to actually you can do it a chemical restraint not a physical restraint is not advised yeah uh how to how to see that many times many times this peer patient that's only reason in mental hospital i don't know how many of you know about um, in tamil nadu we have one of the uh, premier uh, institution, which is Institute of Mental Health, that is 1,850 bedded hospital. Now it is only one third of the beds are full. The remaining is empty. It doesn't mean that we don't have mental health, uh, uh, person with mental health issues in the state or in the country. Why the keeping is many times Under home seats, we couldn't find them at all. So they'll give their, uh, they, probably they would have some actually the uh, southern parts of Tamil Nadu, they'll give Chennai at the single back and when you go and visit to all the streets, you can find them and you have to keep them for a long time. If you kill the death, you have to keep them. The only reasons available. But if you're an NGO and you someone is doing like this, what you have to do is that you have to produce in front of the court of law and say that so and so and is it given like this and what should you do? And uh, actually, as per the law, what it is like, you have to present in front of the magistrate and then put a good, uh, take a, a reception order and uh, hand over the patient to mental hospital. That is instead of mental health of the state if we have. Okay, because I could see other states also. That's why I'm telling, I'm not telling only mental hospital image here. Even uh, Andhra, they have an uh, Andhra Institute of Mental Health. You can, uh, they will take there and they will, they will produce in front of the court and they will do other, other legal issues. Trust is a trust and it is valid for the whole of national, not only for the state. You know, trust when you have, uh, you can be, you can, you can expand your services. You can, you can do it in your own village itself and district or state or the national wide also. If sometimes international also you can do it. Okay. But you're doing it level and you're getting the funds. You are, the, uh, you are sending the funds to them also. That is where the rules or regulations are changes. Okay, but otherwise, within the state, within the country, the rules are the same. Okay, you can do, you can expand it also. So, staff ratio, as I told you, if it's uh, up to 50 patients, social workers, one social worker, one psychologist has to be there. Again, psychologists, they, in fact, Tamil Nadu, they have given an exception saying that actually psychologist can come for a home, on call, has to be there. You know, when there is an issue, actually, they can assess. And reasses, and when there's any, any issues, they can actually do the intervention also. Like that, only they're using it. Otherwise, it's not mandatory. But social work is definitely is a mandatory in a rehab center. Okay, one psychiatrist for taking care of <clears throat> 200 patients, maximum 200 patients, only one psychiatrist is eligible. If you have more than 200 patients, and you must appoint even a visiting faculty, visiting consultant cannot visit, uh, uh, cannot say, so cannot say that actually weekly, twice I'll be visiting and I. Patients like that, you cannot 
Okay, as with the norms, it tells up to 200 patients. In fact, they are, they are trying plan, to they are planning to reduce it to 100 patients now. But as we uh, still not done, but uh, present act and present this thing uh, provision is though uh, the ratio is psychiatrist is up to 200 patients a psychiatrist can see. At the same time, the psychiatrist cannot see more than three institutions, three institutions. Even the government psychiatrist or private psychiatrist, the count because the, 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 for licensing purposes, the psychiatrist give a letter along with while you go for it, well and other things such like that they have got to give a letter. In that letter, if they cannot give for all, well, so, yes, there are some psychiatrists, uh, they are uh, good hearted only, but they have been going to visiting at least more than 10 institutions. So the law says, no, you cannot do it like that. Okay, up to the do it and uh, each institutions maximum patient is 200 patients so you can see them and you are responsible for that well, see, uh, qualifications for the rehab is w masters in social work in fact that is again there's a lot of issues going on now you should have this clinical part of it clinical psychology is clinical social that is there young field must be there like that as for the new act it tells like if you say like that, almost 99 percentage of Tamil Nadu uh, centers, including mental hospital, must shut down because there is no proper uh, qualified people as for the new mental health care act is available. But the old act it tells is that uh, uh, even the statement rules tells is that masters in social work, masters in psychology is enough as a professionals and psychiatrist DPM is sufficient. Okay, but new new mental health care act tells is that actually you, you need to have uh, you need to have that uh, psychiatrist, social workers, and also uh, psychiatric nurse, occupation therapist, with their uh, qualification mentioned in the new mental health care act. This is that psychiatrist, uh, psychiatrist to the room, but uh, psychologist is like clinical psychologist only they are alone. Uh, that the general psychology they have finished and they have only MPhil also. Uh, if they feel as if they have clinical psychology only, they can do, they can be there. Uh, they can, uh, they, if they have a license only, they can go for uh, uh, submitting into the license to get the license for their institutions. Otherwise, without their license, you cannot get the license for the institution. Okay, the individual license is left in institution license. That's what mental health care So, anything else? Okay, next one is. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for this wonderful oh. session. And uh, yes. what is the family? Hello, sir. Can you, can you able to hear me or not? Yes, sir. We are so able connection to hear. problem here. Oh, no, no, no. Yes, sir. Let's stop after some time. What are the procedures to follow? See, if it has been actually, for example, you ask me this question again. If the person is escaped from your center, that's a good question. Uh, you have to report to the police. Okay, the police station within five kilometers, you know. Uh, most of the, uh, you cannot go and give to the district level or taluk level like that. So within of the, uh, the institution where the institution is there, you have to do a large complaint with the photograph. Okay, and... Uh, and they will come for visit and all this thing. In fact, they will make you a lot of uh, things. So that is a different issue. But you, what you have to do is it is mandated that actually they have sufficient gate and lock and all these things. But new mental health care. Place for them to work, do things and also things. Because if you keep it lock and key and people will have a lot of uh, anger and outburst and they want to uh, escape from the facility. Okay, so only what you have to think, first thing is you have to lodge a complaint. And if you know the place, most of them actually, most of them, especially when they have family members, you know, uh, they are going back to their homes, hometown. Even I, I have seen them in. So we can again go to the uh, court of law and say the so and so submitted here.
Sir, are you there? Bastian. And they will, uh, they will. Okay. So, uh, we are not able to hear you. Yes. And uh, they will the poll. Hello. Able to hear. Sir, uh, we were not able to no get the answer for the previous question. Uh, if you could like uh, come again with Hello. the answer. Yes, sir. Now it's audible. Is it audible now? Now it's audible, sir. Mm. Thank you. I am asking about the family of without paying the. Mm. Oh, such patient. Um, yes. I don't know. I'm just using the laptop mic only. I don't know. So I'm still facing a problem. I'm sorry about that. I don't know what to do for that. So even if the patient is, uh, patient family is not paying the fees, and we cannot lodge, we cannot, we can still, we cannot lodge a complaint. Probably you can see that as before admitting itself, we have to take sufficient advance from the patients. And uh, these family members also seeing that as these people uh, with mental illness after they, because many of them is uh, not able to do what they have been doing before the onset of illness. And they see what is the uh, use of taking them back and paying so much money every month, things like that. They're really burdened. Okay, either if you have a trust and you can raise funds for that and support, get some, uh, uh, in fact, actually, I'm also trying to do like that, you know, uh, 3,000 to 4,000 rupees per month. If someone can uh, sponsor me, probably I can take care of the one wandering mentally ill for one month. Like that, I'm trying to uh, do uh, this thing. So like that, I say you can just try and see that whether you can able to raise funds to take care of such people. So initially, they would have paid. They would add money also. But there are sometimes actually people till they get some of them again, because last week also from SCARF, I got a patient and the patient was actually from Belu. The patient had got sufficient money and the mother was about to die and she's around 86 years old and they have big property. And mother, before the, she was falling sick, actually she has given a will and then she has registered the will. The soon after the same day, the second day of the registration, said the person was they wanted admission in institutions like us. No, I could able to sense that and then send them back. That actually we are not here to give you an admission now. Probably after one month we can give admission. I will give admission. But the person finally he was on the half value district now. I have photograph from the local institution there. Okay, so. As like attention of the people are to get as you know uh, sometimes to get the property uh, disputes and all these things they will actually act you know uh, pretend to uh, they are taking care of them well after then they leave them also so it is the our judgment sometimes goes wrong also you try and see that judge them well and uh, whether they can cap cap minimal amount if not you can make profit out of it and if, otherwise, you have to find a second solution is that can raise funds on behalf of the patient and uh, keep him with you. Otherwise, what you can do is actually you can hand over back to the mental hospital and we'll take care of it. If the mental hospital is not finding any fault with you. Oh, sorry. Uh, can I send or uh, may I request Veena to send the mail ID? 
Sir, you can type it in the chat box so that no, they can like uh, note it down and get back to you. If I'm, okay doing, I'm you. doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it now. Yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir, for this uh, wonderful <laughs> session. And uh, no doubt. yes, uh, this is a very new topic for all of us. And really, you have enlightened about the policies and uh, the rules and regulations uh, for. Uh, uh, you no, know, establishing a trust or an NGO, what are the norms that have to be followed? And uh, personally, I am a person who got like, uh, no, uh, the teachings from you on how a rehabilitation should be done. Uh, so it's my blessing that I've been taught by you uh, with your vast experience. I have learned a lot and uh, I got the belief that mental health has to come out of the institutions into the community. And uh, your work really inspired me a lot. And uh, I've been like doing my support in whatever way I could do. And uh, definitely the future generations will take this up and uh, really work on creating a lot of awareness and breaking the stigma on mental health issues. Sir. Thank you so much. And uh, we would it, it would be an honor for us if you could take another session and uh, you know, uh, give us more into these uh, rehabilitation works. Uh, I sincerely request you on behalf of the core team members and also on behalf of our uh, uh, lead uh, Suresh Kumar sir uh, hope you agree for this and also we are very happy that you have consented uh, um, uh, no uh, like a uh, scarf to be an associate partner of our mental health webinar series which is uh, very great for us and a happy news uh, thank you so much sir and uh, I take this opportunity to call upon Dr. Salim sir to place a vote of thanks for today's resource person Yeah, I just want to thank you, Miss Vena and others also for listening to me. I am very sorry for these technical issues which has is happened today. One is the video and second is the sometimes people say the audio too. Okay, I am definitely willing to not only one more, two more also if you want, I can definitely do it. As well, knowledge is only for sharing. And I, do, I will not teach any book teaching because I am a teacher too. And I can probably share my experiences in a couple of one or two sessions. Also, if you want, I can definitely extend my service to you all. You all, thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Now I call upon Dr. Salim, sir, to please place a vote of thanks. Salim, sir, we are unable to hear you, sir. Oh, is it packing? Okay. I'll go ahead with the um, word of thanks. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Koteshwara Rao, sir, for this wonderful session. As Veena Man told, you would really love to have you uh, for more sessions. And uh, thank you for uh, being very open. And uh, uh, it was very, very informative today's session. And uh, uh, thank you so much for that. And I, uh, um, on behalf of the Department of Psychology, American College, Madurai, uh, the Mental Health Webinar Series 2020 core team members, and also on behalf of all the association institutes like Madras School of Social Work Chennai, International Center for Clinical Psychology and Psychotherapy Germany, MS Chalamutu Institute of Mental Health and Rehabilitation Madurai, Edpoint Educational and Psychological uh, Research Center Madurai, Psycho Oncological Association Turkey. I am uh, placing my heartfelt thanks uh, to you and all the other participants who are here um, and who have been uh, supported throughout. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for being here. It was a wonderful and a very, very informative session. Thank you.
Thanks, Ananya. And uh, thank you so much, Kotishra, sir, for uh, accepting and uh, taking the session and uh, looking forward for uh, future sessions as well. And participants, kindly send your queries and feedback to my webinar feedback at gmail.com. We will meet tomorrow with yet another wonderful session. Thank you. Good night. Bye bye. And happy Dashra to you all. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, sir. Good day. Thank you, sir.